sir, and I want to <clears throat> I want to commend you for initiating uh, this important and timely uh, international panel. And I'm delighted as well uh, to do what the Canadian government has already done long ago, and that is to both recognize and affirm the democratic leadership of Juan Guaido. And I'm delighted that he has uh, been with us and to provide his uh, exemplary uh, leadership on this panel. What I, I'd like to do is just uh, outline uh, within the framework of the subject matter of this panel, what I would call an international justice agenda. Uh, for reasons of time, I will just uh, effectively enumerate it. I won't be able to elaborate on it, but this is an informed group for whom no elaboration is really necessary. Number one, um, and this has to do with an initiative read the International uh, Criminal Court. Uh, as we know, some two and a half years ago, the Organization of American uh, States uh, Independent Panel of Legal Experts, of which I was privileged to be one, reported that there were reasonable grounds to believe that seven major crimes against humanity were being committed in Venezuela, which included state-orchestrated humanitarian suffering, the weaponization of food and medicine, which led to drastic uh, humanitarian suffering and, and uh, consequences. Some months thereafter, Canada led a group of both Latin American and European countries in making the first ever collective referral to the International Criminal Court of a state party, Venezuela. Regrettably, to date, uh, the ICC has not yet opened any investigation or prospective prosecution. I believe that the seven countries that then initiated that collective referral should reaffirm this, even get other countries on board to combat the culture of impunity and utilize the ICC for that purpose. Number two, we need to initiate a procedure and process under the International Court of Justice for the uh, horrific acts of torture that have been committed in, in Venezuela. Here too, Venezuela is a state party uh, to the torture uh, convention. Such a process can and should be uh, initiated. A uh, process has recently been initiated in that regard, as we know, with regard to uh, the Gambia, uh, re, uh, Myanmar. Another one is now being initiated by the Netherlands, re, Syria. There should be one with regard to uh, <coughs> the horrific cases of, of torture, which uh, Justice Manuel Robles Ventura of our OAS uh, panel said were the worst cases of torture that he had witnessed in any conflict anywhere. Number three, uh, utilize the procedure and process for universal uh, jurisdiction to initiate uh, prosecutions in our respective countries where fugitive criminals from Venezuela uh, may in, in fact ensconce themselves. They should not enjoy impunity and we should be initiating such prosecutions. Number four, the Raoul Wallenberg Center for Human Rights uh, has established a partnership with the Global Accountability uh, Initiative headed by Professor David Crane for a specific Venezuelan accountability initiative. This will involve evidence-based uh, metrics of prosecutorial uh, remedies that will underpin the aforementioned remedies, whether they be before the ICC or the ICJ or universal jurisdiction. Number five, we need to utilize the UN Special Remedies and Special Procedures Initiative. Let me mention one, uh, the UN Working Group on the Disappeared. Uh, we've had reports, and particularly this past uh, June, of the expansion of uh, Disappeared uh, in Venezuela. And here too, we need to hold uh, Venezuelans officials responsible in that criminality to account. This too was one of the crimes against humanity we identified in our OAS report, but that has been uh, expanded. And I might mention here that the UN Commission on Human Rights just one month ago itself uh, reaffirmed that crimes against humanity were being committed in Venezuela and the disappeared is one of the most egregious of those crimes. Number six, we need to enhance Magnitsky sanctions and, and here to secure justice for the victims and uh, accountability for the human rights violators. As the father, the global father of Magnitsky sanctions is on this panel, I'll leave it to Bill Browder uh, to continue, but he is the one who inspired us and one of the first countries that Canada imposed 
Magnitsky sanctions upon were, uh, or were the first human rights violators were from uh, Venezuela. Number seven, the Raoul Wallenberg Center for Human Rights has partnered with the parliamentarians for global action to initiate an emergency parliamentary uh, response rapid deployment group to protect uh, parliamentarians and human rights uh, defenders under uh, imminent uh, harm and to help uh, build a uh, parliamentary initiative in that regard. Number eight, and in that uh, regard, uh, we should establish an inter-parliamentary alliance uh, with respect to uh, Venezuela, similarly to an inter-parliamentary alliance that we've established uh, with regard to China. We already have 23 uh, uh, de democracies and parliamentarians from those democracies in that alliance. We should be doing the same thing with regard to Venezuela and hold hearings in our respective jurisdictions. Canada held hearings before our Foreign Affairs Committee, uh, particularly with regard to uh, R2P, and that too would be another initiative. Number nine, and moving to a close, we should initiate uh, before the UN Security Council under the auspices of the ARIA formula, uh, named after Diego uh, ARIA, who was former president of the UN uh, Security and presider of UN Security Council, an inquiry uh, that in fact could also serve the causes of justice and uh, accountability. And finally, we need to uh, not only enhance uh, humanitarian relief and assistance that is desperately needed, but we need to provide a safe harbor for Venezuelan uh, refugees um, in our respective uh, countries and utilize our refugee laws and immigration laws for that purpose. Uh, the last initiative I will leave to the world expert on that, and that is the manner in which R2P uh, can be used to underpin the whole process of securing uh, justice and accountability in Venezuela. We have the world's uh, leading expert on that, Jared Genzer, who will be speaking on this panel. So I'll close now. Uh, these then are the initiatives that I believe can be taken within a framework of securing justice and accountability for Venezuela.